Hi, and welcome to the Science Fantasy Experience. So, a good few weeks back, a uh, friend and fellow YouTuber and Figure Force member, Zort Rider, did a Transformers review the decade questionnaire. And I was so intrigued by the questions that he did that I have compiled a set of answers to it as a video response. Albeit with a, a slight twist. Only because I am more a toy collector as opposed to a Transformers collector. Do not fear, trans fans out there, um, there is a whole slew of Transformers and robots in my answers. There's always going to be, you know, the transforming robots make up the core of my toy collection. So I will drop a link in the description box for Zorider's original video, which showcased his um, eight questions, and here are my answers. Which toy fills a gap in your childhood? For me, reviewing the decade, or even the last, 35 years, this toy fills a huge gap for me, and that would be Roy Foker's VF1S from Robotech or Macross, depending on how you view it. For the longest time, did I want a Valkyrie? or a VF1, a fighter, in the collection. Ever since I first saw Robotech in the 80s, and then subsequently as I saw the Japanese version, Macross, in the 2000s, I've just always desperately wanted the VF1, and especially Roy Fokers, because of the colorway. And they've always eluded me. The original Bandai ones just exponentially went up in price and I just they were always way out of my reach and I also ended up getting dissuaded from buying them because they just because there's so much die cast in the originals that they get loose and for anyone that's owned a Jetfire the Transformer toy that came from that original toy line, they're yellow, they yellow like there is no tomorrow. So when I saw the, the Valkyrie factory were doing the 165 scale, you know, it's only, the originals were 155 scale and then this, you can't tell the difference in size at all. But it's just an absolutely stunning toy. I've had it in Batroid mode for the last two weeks and I only just changed it back to the fighter mode yesterday. In some ways I should have kept it in Batroid mode because it's each mode is stunning um, but the fighter mode is my favourite. To be honest, Batroid mode is actually of the three my least favourite because I dig Gerwalk. The Gerwalk is just synonymous with the 80s and as a kid I just thought it was the most wildest, wackiest thing I'd seen. A half transformed robot plane all arched over with giant arms and it was just, it was just non-existent in my collection until just a few months ago. So yeah, that is the first entry in two Zort Riders questions. Which toy fills the gap in your childhood? Roy Focus VF1S. Question two. What is the best mainline Transformers toy? There's been a few mainline versions of Transformers as of late. 
you know, we've had Titans Return, Power of the Primes, we now have Siege. I wasn't remotely interested in Combiner Wars at all. And I only picked up one piece of Power of the Primes, and that was Punch, Cunt, Punch, which a thoroughly enjoyable mainline toy for sure. It did have its limitations. Um, I've not picked up any seeds yet because the only one I want to get is the toy version of Refractor and I'm in no rush to get that because I think it's somewhat slightly overpriced for me and I already have a third party reflector and I'm not interested in owning multiples of the same character bar, you know, G1 Optimus Prime and Power Master Optimus Prime so for me, the best main line toy would be Cup from Takara LG I think this is an absolutely stunning version of the character, both aesthetically and toy playability. Both modes are wonderful. There is zero kibble. It almost went to blur because I think the Takara LG version of Blur is spot on with the colouring but he's just got kind of a few bits of kibble that just he's not as smooth as Cup is and I think they absolutely nail the colours and the face sculpt of the flinty old warrior he's so poseable his joints are great and he was just he was a fun pickup to have with me and Zorider uh, TFN because we undernawed about picking him up for like six hours and I have no idea why which already had the Titans return uh, version so I didn't know why he was I mean, an about it I hadn't bought a Transformers toy for a good couple of years until I hit up TFN but I just think he looks he looks excellent and he's fun to play with, and I think that's what you want from a mainline toy. It, it's, you know, 99 out of 100, you know, that's how, that's how good it is. I think the only criticism, and it's not even that, you can kind of see the gaps now of where Hasbro and Takara are saving money on the plastic. Which I can deal with that amount of gapness to get something as incredible as Takara LG Cup. I can take that hit. So yeah, that is the answer to question two. What is the best mainline Transformers toy? Takara LG Cup. Question three. Best masterpiece Transformer. In the last ten years we have had some incredible masterpiece Transformers. We've also had some lacklustre ones. I had three that I was umming and ahhing about. You know, in terms of this whole questionnaire that Zort Rider has done, it got revived. Every question went through revisions because I just kind of kept on changing my mind, you know, toy collecting is so personal and what each one means to you and what you look for in a toy, you know, is it aesthetics, is it playability, is it, you know, nostalgia, is it that feeling that you get from just looking at it, is it something about shelf presence? But for me, I'd nailed it down to MP11 Starscream with the Coronation kit. Because that's, it's not the best, but it has incredible shelf presence. You open up the purple cape and his gold plastic crown, and he just looks like he jumps off the screen. My version is kind of a little bit loose all around the chest piece. So it's always not going to make it the best, but he was definitely a contender. 
and then I'd got MP09B, the black Rodimus convoy. But did that come out in the last ten years? I'm, I'm, I'm not too. I'm not too sure. But it's even just MP9 stunning. The alt mode is incredible, and the fact that you can either do hot rod or Rodimus Prime, Rodimus convoy. So yeah, he was always going to be an absolute contender, but for me, it is always going to be, I believe, Soundwave, especially the San Diego Comic Con version, which I have here. The fact that it comes with all the extra cassettes, an Energon Cube, Megatron's gun, and it comes with the toy aesthetic, yellow eyes. That's what I was looking for. I don't need everything to be screen accurate. I like a little bit of a homage to the OG toy. Both modes, incredible. So blocky and chunky. You know, if G1 was made now, this is, this is what it would be. Again, ultimately poseable. The fact that you can do him having the click like so many times on the show. The fact that you can still pop it open and have one of the cassettes inside. I think he is visually stunning. Again, he's another shelf presence. Just because of the pure size of him, he, he towers over so many other Masterpieces, if you think about the Datsuns or tracks, you know, the worst masterpiece toy ever. I've got to give it to San Diego Comic Con Soundwave. He's incredible. So, yeah, best masterpiece, Soundwave all the way. Question four Best third party toy. No revisions here, didn't even have to think about it. Straight off the bat, Fans Project Glacial Lord. By far the greatest and the best third party toy I own. So much fun to be had with the combining gimmick. The fact that it also has a type of Headmaster gimmick where the riders make up the chests. G1 aesthetics with modern day tech and engineering. It looks like it could have jumped out of the cartoon. Who knew you needed a prehistoric antelope, reindeer, stag, animal. The colours are incredible, so matching. It feels like an exquisite G1 toy. Not to mention, they gave it a whole backstory and this beautiful set of boxes. You know, back when I first started my channel, I, I'd mentioned that I'd wanted to, to pick it up and then later on in the year, I, I finally managed to get one a good few years ago and I did a whole like week's worth of reviews, reviewing each individual bot and then the combined mode of Glacial Lord. It would sit happy in anyone's G1 collection because the aesthetic is, is there. It doesn't have any of the looseness that the combiners used to have back in the day. And it's just something so unique and individual. Yeah, there's other third party toys out there that, you know, are bigger, more impressive in terms of transformations, but to bridge that gap for someone who is a, a G1 lover, it just absolutely, absolutely nails it. Again, it's another shelf piece. I have friends come over and they're like, I don't remember seeing that in the cartoon. And I'm like, no, of course not. It was never in the cartoon. It's a third party. It's this beautiful homage to 
what things were in the 80s. So yeah, for me, best third party toy by far is Fans Project Glacial Lord. Question five, what is the most important purchase? For me, in the past decade, it has to be Evolution Toys Big Die X from Starfleet. I waited my whole life for this toy. Back in 1982, when Starfleet X Bomber came onto our TV screens, it absolutely blew me away. I'd seen Stingray and Thunderbirds. So I was, you know, I was well in the zone of puppetry shows, but I'd just never seen Super Sentai. So to see that blend of puppetry models and Super Sentai, it's just, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's one of my all time favorite shows. Um, irregardless of whether it's science fiction or a kids show and to finally own the three component parts that build the die X from the leg track to the main body to the brain com it's unreal they're just if I could have had Starfleet toys as a kid I would have wanted them I would have wanted the X bomber ship and I would have wanted a die X. I'd mentioned it before in my Let's Talk Starfleet video. I used to build them out of Lego because they just there were no Starfleet toys. It wasn't until I dialed up the internet in the late nineties to find out that there had been releases of the big die X in Japan. Why is it Toka? Tasu toys, a terrible pronunciation. So there, there were toys that existed because obviously Starfleet was brought over to the West from Gona guys, X bomber. So the, the toys did exist, but obviously that they were never going to be in the Western world in the eighties. And then seeing how ridiculously priced they were, even back in ninety eight, ninety nine. So yeah, I've literally waited my whole life to own this incredible toy. It's all done, the ball joints are all done by magnets. So you can build the representative parts and then give it incredible maneuverability and poses. Die cast and plastic to be able to have it in the three modes and the combined die X, it's a lifelong dream fulfilled. That's why it's one of the most important toys in my collection to live and breathe that dream fulfillment of a young four year old boy. So yeah, question five, what is the most important toy purchase and that would be Evolution Toys Dynamite number 12 Big Die X. Question 6. What is the best gift you have received? I've had some wonderful donations and gifts to my toy collection from friends and families, fellow YouTubers, subscribers and to pick a best would be a disservice to everybody or offensive I you know who's to say what's best and what's what's not I just couldn't come to choosing or let alone really want to try I, I view them all in such different ways so what I've done is picked one that's very personal and incredibly interesting to me and that would be a gift from uh, John Grieve, Mr. Borders Dude himself. He uh, gifted me a mint on seal card, G.I. Joe Battle Corps Bazooka. John knows 
the Bazooka is one of my all-time favourite G.I. Joe characters. I only have a few favourite G.I. Joe characters. And I do have a 25th anniversary Bazooka. So I do have a Bazooka in my collection. So what makes this so interesting and personalised is because when Battlecore came out, it was like 1992. I had left G.I. Joe and Action Force a good few years before then. Tiger Force was my last interest in G.I. Joe and that was going to be a hard act to follow because I absolutely adore Tiger Force. It's my pretty much my favourite thing in Action Force and G.I. Joe. So to get this it's wonderful because I would never go out and try and find a battle core. And it's great to own something from the 90s that it's just, to me, it is that little bit obscure. I'm sure to Joe fans and other toy collectors, you know, it's just a slightly failed attempt to keep G.I. Joe alive. You know, you had Battle Corps and Ninja Force, uh, D, E, F, the, and the thing you have, the, the Space Rangers. I don't even know what they're properly called just because by that point I was just not into toys, you know. Come 92, I'm 14 years old. I had left, in some way, toys behind and I wasn't into the realms of collecting. I've mentioned it many a times in previous videos and it literally oozes the 90s, the day go out colours and it's just a, a fresh different take on a beloved character of mine. I absolutely adore Bazooka and to see him in such a different vein it's just a very interesting and cool piece to, to be gifted. So my thanks again to John Green, Mr Borders Dude for making that part of my collection. Question seven, what is your find of the decade? For me, a few years ago, I managed to pick up, I'd say this is one of my all time holy grails. I have a few holy grails for sure because I enjoy collecting toys from all aspects, whether it's dolls, action figures, transforming toys and to have never owned and chased my whole life to get these, either finding them or being brave enough to get them from far overseas, whether it be Japan or America, I managed to get hold of some Wheeled Warriors complete with the correct accessories. I'm only missing one figure. Jason the Wheeled Warriors is, it could well be my favourite cartoon of the 80s. You know it ran for its full 65 episodes and didn't get resolved and every episode, it, it, there's no fillers, every episode is just pure 80s cartoon entertainment full of wonderful characters, really sinister bad guys and a whole slew of cool weapons and vehicles. Again in that same vein as Starfleet, they just they weren't on the toy shelves in the UK at all. I never I never saw them. But I knew they existed because I had a friend who was from Florida and he'd come to live in the UK and he'd, he'd told us all about Wheeled Warriors having toys. Obviously they were never based on the TV show. The TV show came afterwards and they are some of the coolest toys. They're all modular so you can flip around all the weapons and have them how you see fit. They are covered in silver and gold plated plastic and I have not seen any cracks on mine at all. 
you know, I don't have the boxes or anything, but they're on display all the time, but I've got no gold plastic syndrome at all. I chased them for a long, long time, and to have armed force and drill sergeant, it's, it took my collecting to the next level. It's a hard thing with Holy Grails because once you've got them, the chase sometimes it dissipates. But you know, th there is more. I definitely would like to get some monster mines to go. I'd love to get a saw boss to go with these other two to have them on display together. My absolute find of a decade a few years ago, chatting to a guy just in a forum and he was he was willing to let two go and they did come from America and I was lucky enough not to get stung by import charges he threw in a comic it was just it was two guys literally geeking out over toys and not having certain toys in our relative countries you know I think it even stems from a conversation about Galaxy Rangers because he was just like he could never find Galaxy Rangers in the stores in America and you know it was a huge it was a huge show and there was the toys were readily available in in the UK and it all stemmed from that and then he generously offered to get get them shipped over to me so yeah my most important find of the decade is Wheels Warriors Question eight, what one thing do you want to add in the next decade? Again, this takes no thought at all. It's something I've been after for, again, years and years. And as the years progress, I just know it's getting harder and harder. And to be reunited with other toys from this toy line, it's... It's the one that I desperately want from Action Force and G.I. Joe. That would be the Dreadnought Thunder Machine. When I got the Havoc a few years ago, I was blown away because I'd never, I'd never had it. I'd always seen it in the shops and other friends had had it. And then when I got reunited with the AWE Striker last year, I was just like, I miss having G.I. Joe and Action Force vehicles. And this is the one, the Thunder Machine, that tops it. It's just an incredibly cool vehicle. The front end is blatantly uh, Pontiac Firebird. It, it just looks exactly like the hood of that car. And then it's just got, you know, rocket propelled engine. It's got bullet holes, Gatling guns, fat tires. It's... The Dreadnoughts are my favourite when it comes to G.I. Joe, uh, especially Cobra, you know, the hired help. They are just absolute buffoons drinking their grape soda and their chocolate covered donuts. It's, it's the one thing I want to get. I just know it would be a standout shelf piece and it would be a lot of fun to have in the collection. It's eluded me so many times. I just I've never seen it at toy fairs. I know I can I could get one if I was prepared to pay X amount of money. It's in pieces. You always see them junkers go up, and you could build one together, and that could be a fun exploration. But I'm like, it's not that I'm lazy. I just sometimes you just want that instant hit of owning that toy. It's not exactly. A holy grail. I'm in no rush to get it, and I still want to keep that that chase going. If one time I ever went to the NEC Toy Fair or Totten Toy Fair, or you know, just anywhere, if I if I went to the Vintage Toy Monster, the coolest toy shop in Portsmouth, I if it was there, I would I'd snap up in an instant. Yeah, that is the one thing I'd love to add in the next in the next decade, the Dreadnought Thunder Machine. So these have been my eight answers to Zort Riders. 
review of the decade. A couple of Transformers. They were always going to be in there. My thanks to Zork Rider for starting this review the decade questionnaire. I think it's a great questionnaire and it really got me thinking about my collection. Each answer just mostly got revised over and over, you know, was Casey Jones going to get a mention? You know, were uh, Gem and the Holograms going to get a mention? There were so many things that just could have made it into this this decade because, you know, just collecting just has got stronger and stronger the last few years. I have been Rudy Zissou. Always remember, it's as much about play as it is display. Thanks for watching.